Grand Bahama Power Company Solar Sunrise Power Plant officially commissioned. The nation's leader holding a special meeting at the Free National Movement headquarters and one MP shares why he was a no-show. And the Bahamas Spring Carnival set for the first Saturday in March. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Rolf Farkasin. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news this evening, the nation's leader, Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, on Grand Bahama on Friday for a groundbreaking ceremony for a mega project. Grand Bahama Power Company officially breaking ground for its solar sunrise power plant located on West Sunrise Highway. Once completed, the new solar plant is expected to save the company and customers thousands thousands of dollars a year. Italia Hall was there. Solar Sunrise is the name of the West Sunrise plant that will be built on 15 acres of land. The total cost of the project is some $5 million and $2 million will be invested in Grand Bahamas economy. Construction General Manager of Grupo Tech Renewables Limited, Vicente Gimenez, and Director of Grid Solutions at the Grand Bahama Power Company, Delano Arthur, say there will be enough electricity to support hundreds of homes on Grand Bahama. 11,500 solar panels will be installed. The facility will generate more than 5,900 megawatts hour per year. To give an idea, this production will cover the energy consumption of more than 850 homes, reducing the CO2 emissions annually by over 4,200 tons. That's remarkable. We know that this is the right time to invest in solar. We know that this is the right time to invest in battery storage. We know that this is the right time to invest in renewable energy. Prime Minister Dr. The Most Honorable Hubert Minnis says the government is making strides in the energy sector and additional tax incentives have been introduced for solar equipment. And we expect to complete energy efficient retrofits and solar photovoltaic installations this year at the Anatole Rogers High School and the TG Global Primary School, both in New Providence. The schools will have a combined renewable energy capacity of 386 kilowatts. He says the step that GBPC has made is an important step in the right direction for Grand Bahama and the Bahamas. This is very good news, given the ongoing fluctuation in global oil prices and the resulting rate volatility. Even better news is that GBPC has made a commitment to invest more than $18 million in renewable energy and smart technology over the next three years in order to improve reliability and to lower energy costs here in Grand Bahama. Chief Financial Officer at the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Deanne Seymour, noting the significance of the project and congratulated the Grand Bahama Power Company for the achievement. As regulators, the Grand Bahama Port Authority has keenly encouraged and championed the efforts of the electrical company to deliver cleaner, more affordable energy and to provide solutions that will power a future which is environmentally, financially and socially sustainable. The ground was then officially broken. The project is expected to begin in May and end in August of this year. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Well, while on island on Friday, the Prime Minister also attended a special meeting at the Free National Movement headquarters in Freeport. The nation's leader touched on a number of new developments for the island and says Grand Bahamians will soon see a positive shift in the island's economy. Italia Hall was there. I love you. Prime Minister the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis says the government is committed to the development of this northern island and for the first time since the recession in 2008, Grand Bahama's unemployment rate is under 12 percent, standing at 11.9 percent. While this is very good news, the jobless rate in Grand Bahama is still way too high. And it must and it will come down even more. Yeah. 
In 2016, your island's tourism product received a devastating blow by Hurricane Matthew. In 2017, you lost 40% of your tourists. As a result of our efforts, we saw an increase in tourist arrivals for Grand Bahama during 2018. And we expect that 2019 will be an even better year. He reiterated that a major step on Grand Bahama for the government was the purchase of the Grand Lucayne Resort property, and he believes if this decision was not made, the hotel would have fallen into a state of disrepair. You should be proud because of very high interest in developing the Grand Lucayne by many investors. Many investors have come forward because they have confidence in the prospects for Grand Bahama. He says the government has recently approved in principle the establishment of an international medical school. A $10 million investment, which has the potential to bring about 200 construction jobs and 400 permanent jobs. Prime Minister Minnis emphasized that the new Carnival Cruise Port that is set to be built in East Grand Bahama is another plus for the island and is expected to provide thousands of jobs for residents. He also spoke about the housing subdivision in Bahamia West. He says to date some 26 homes are vacant and residents will soon be able to purchase those homes at a big discounted price. He added that Grand Bahama is moving in the right direction. One of the rating agencies in recognition of our hard work and disciplined work to restore the Bahamas economy, said that the outlook for the Bahamas is stable. We have moved from a negative to a, part, to a stable rating, but we still have plenty work to do. He says Grand Bahamians must not forget the condition that the Progressive Liberal Party left the island in. The PLP promised you plenty things, <laughs> but they let you down over and over and over again. Remember those PLPs who thought they were large and in charge all over Grand Bahama. But I can tell you this, those who used to be in charge and thought they were in charge are in charge no more. The nation's leader announced that he will be seeking another term in office in 2022 and after which he will retire and give his parliamentary colleagues an opportunity. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now, the Free National Movement's Member of Parliament for Pine Ridge was noticeably missing at Friday's special meeting at the FNM headquarters. Reverend Frederick McElpine was the only local parliamentarian who did not attend that party event. He called a press conference this morning to explain his absence. Megan Shepard reports. Hundreds of Free National Movement supporters gathered at the FNM headquarters for that special meeting, led by Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Talk to Hubert Minnis. In attendance, four of the five parliamentarians for this island, along with the Minister of State for Grand Bahama. Now the Member of Parliament for Pine Ridge, Frederick McElpine, who did not attend, explaining that he had previously made a commitment to the church that was confirmed a long time before the town meeting was announced. He says he is comfortable with his decision. I think I should be there when it warrants that, when it warrants an important meeting. This was not a meeting of importance. It was not a, a town meeting, because if it was a meeting of importance, then it should not have been held at the FNM headquarters in the first place. If it was held someplace else, other than the FNM headquarters, then it might have warned me being there. But obviously, if you're having something at the FNM headquarters, you don't intend to get the wider public, which would include also the people of Pine Ridge. So obviously, this was more of a, a meeting for party supporters rather than for people of Grand Bahama. 
Now the MPs in attendance were able to update supporters on constituency business. Michael Pine says that he's been making positive strides for Pine Ridge. I would be discussing the fact that there's still a lot of hurting people and that the fact that uh, the Pine Ridge Educational Center, which is now on midterm break, has 44 students seeking to get their diploma. We have a problem in this country. We have already said we are at a D average. And one of the problems we're having in this country is a lot of people are leaving school but not graduating. I am trying to empower people. 44 students from 13 polling divisions throughout my constituency are trying to make life better. I'm not just trying to give anybody a fish. I'm trying to actually teach them how to fish. The parliamentarian emphasizing that he is first and foremost a Bahamian with the best interests of Bahamians at heart. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Switching gears now, the Scouts Association of the Bahamas honoring a dedicated official for his many years of service and outstanding contribution to the scouting movement of the Bahamas. Ramiko Knowles was there. Family and friends of District Commissioner Eric Reginald Dean gathering at the Pelican Bay Resort for a special recognition banquet in Dean's honor. The event commencing to the sound of drums and the parade of flags being carried by Junior Boy Scouts. On hand to congratulate Dean was former Member of Parliament Nico Grant. He says that he's known the honoree for some 30 years. Having met Dean as he joined the softball team he sponsored and managed. He says during that time Reginald became a son. There are some people who come into our life at various stages and for various reasons. Some come for a season, some come for a lifetime. During my tenure on this earth, I have met many people. But in terms of dependability, there are very few like Reginald Dean. Being reliable is one of the most valued traits in a person. If Reggie promises you he will do something for you, you can bet your bottom dollar it will be done. The evening became somewhat emotional as Bohemian vocalist Dan O'Roll did a rendition of Wind Beneath My Wings. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, also bringing remarks noting that he too was once a Boy Scout and owes much of his discipline to the organization. The scouting organization and the men that I had the opportunity to interact with and to learn and to mentor under had the most significant impact outside of my parents on shaping what I've become today. We still have a great need in this country and I am once again sharing the plea of all of our leaders and all of the young men in this country and young boys in this country for us to step up to the plate as Reggie has done. During the banquet, District Commissioner Reginald Dean received the wood badge for achieving the highest level of training in the Scouts organization. He was robed in the new scouting apparel by the National Training Commissioner Joseph Pickering. Dean says it's an honor to be recognized, but helping others is something he enjoys doing. I was a brigade before I joined Scouts and um, a few years ago, a um, little more than say nine years. There was a cry out from Mr. Clayton Curtis, who was in charge of the scouts at the time, and uh, needing assistance, and I went out, did the general information course. Then I did the basic one, two, advanced one and two, and on to my wood barge. That's where I am right now. But it's, it's something I love to do. I love to help young people. Rumiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. Stay with us. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, continues right after this.